Hey guys, I wanted to show you some things around the garden and I realized that one of the prettiest combinations I have this spring is this little vignette here. I have some a burgundy and white palette over here with the Japanese maple. This was a Japanese maple I just found in my front yard underneath a larger one that I have. And I've had it in that pot maybe two years now, but I ended up putting those pansies under it and I really love the combination of that uh, purpley burgundy and white. And then right next to it I have some cuttings and these are just from the euonymus in the back and they're kind of a chartreuse. So I, I really love this combination of colors here in this little grouping of pots. And uh, it's something that's really easy to do, just group pots around the garden and play with textures and colors. So I'm really happy with how that looks. I think it's so pretty. And I love that combination of the white and the burgundy. And then up here, I've put out my little Tradescandia and it's hanging on a hook and it's not looking its best yet but that'll be a beautiful purpley colored plant just hanging back here so I think that'll be really pretty and I made three new topiaries I just got one tall green mountain boxwood and chopped it into three pieces and I'm trying to do double balls on both of them. So I've kind of trimmed it out here. And um, these take a couple years to get going and really fill in. They're looking really sparse now. I really chopped off a lot. And of course I saved a lot of the cuttings to try to root. You can hardly even see that double ball. But if I stand back, you can get the idea. So those are the new ones I started and maybe two or three years from now they'll look terrific. But I'll show you the ones I did last year and they look very good. These were some that I worked on last year. Um, I haven't done anything with the lemon cypress. That was new at the end of last season and that just overwintered in my house because that does not is not hardy to my area. But the other uh, three here, this one of course is a little puny. It started out very small. But these are two that I bought and as you can see I left a lot more on them so they're a little further along in their in their maturity levels. But look look how great they filled in and I've already chopped back quite a bit. I've done the spring pruning but look how cute those topiaries look guys. That one's looking really fantastic. And this double ball one is also coming along great. There was hardly anything at the top. And um, I've even pruned it up a bit, but now it's like a little ball. So I'm really thrilled about that. And uh, that's just something fun I like to do every spring. Uh, last year and this year, I, I've really gotten into topiary. There's my rabbit over there bouncing along. I don't know if you can see. There she is. So I have to get rabbit proof plants, but uh, she likes to hang out under the bird feeder and eat some of the seeds that drop there. And I see her eating with the birds and the squirrels and the chipmunks. And I tell you, it makes me feel like Snow White with all these animals enjoying the backyard. Isn't she cute? And she has a boyfriend that comes around. So you know what happens if you have one bunny plus one bunny, you get 18 bunnies. So we'll see, it could be uh, a whole field of bunnies out here pretty soon. And I wanted to show you the triangle garden. I worked on it yesterday. First of all, look how beautiful this stone crop sedum is. I think that's what it's called, but it's going to put out some yellow flowers billowing along my path. So it does need a little trimming back around the stones. But uh, I did put in some marigolds yesterday, and I spread out all the salvia across the front. I had it all grouped at one end, 
and I decided to make it sort of a border along here. So that'll look really pretty. I think it's about to bloom in another couple weeks, but that'll be a purple edge. And then behind it are the orange annuals, marigolds. And um, all of those are rabbit proof. They don't, they don't really care for the flavor of that. So I think I'm pretty safe unless some other animal comes along. And then I did get this. I was out at a thrift store and I found that. I thought that was a beautiful garden accent. And I also have some chrysanthemum here and also one in the back. And across the back here I have yarrow, also rabbit proof. And uh, in the very back I have some arugula, that tall flowering plant is arugula. So I'm hoping that goes to seed because I'd like to have more arugula next spring. And then in the back, that's a somewhat shaded area, I put a San Marzano tomato, which can handle part shade. And again, I've protected it with some marigolds. That's a, a good thing to do, companion planting. Keep the bugs away, discourage the bugs. And I continued the companion planting along here. I put in some larger yellow marigolds. Hopefully those will get nice and tall. And I have those in between three tomato plants along my deck here. Here's a little peek into the polytunnel. Got a lot of seedlings on the go here. Got more tomato plants back here. They're getting very robust with a couple of warm days. And uh, just lots of seedlings going. I started some zinnias because they, when they're small, tend to get eaten, I think, by either bugs or birds. I don't know, something like young, tender shoots, but they're doing well in here. I have some Isabellina zinnias, and those are a pale yellow zinnia, and they're just gorgeous. And then I have some California giants growing here. And again, just with a couple warm days, they got quite a bit bigger. And I've got different things going along here. Little by little, I'm trying to clear out the greenhouse so I can bring my cactus collection out here. But there are some purple opal basil in the back. I'm just growing those in some cells. And I have some tiny little dill plants. I have a lot of trouble growing dill, so I'm really hoping that a couple of them go well this year. And then I've got some geranium cuttings here. Uh, a couple of these were from last year. The ones across here are all from last year. And then um, these here are all cuttings from new geraniums I got. And I've decided that the color I really love is this hot pink. I love it. It's kind of a purpley pink. In fact, I think they call this the violet geranium. And then this geranium is um, a little bit different. It's got the hot pink and it's got some stripes in it. So it's kind of a nice uh, accent plant with this. But I've put in some coleus cuttings and um, seems like they've taken. They're the easiest cuttings to take. But I think that'll be really pretty. The burgundy and the hot pink and then these variegated leaves. I think that's going to be gorgeous. And this one has kind of an ivy shaped leaf. So I don't know if that's an ivy leaf geranium, but we'll see. It's going to be really pretty when it blooms. And then I had some microgreens over here, which I've really been enjoying. Some of them are even growing back where I've cut it, but I have a couple more cuts going here, but that's a really nice way to have um, some greens early in the spring when things aren't too big yet. But I've really enjoyed doing that. I'm going to do that again uh, several times this year, I think. Some of the azaleas are blooming and they're just beautiful. Again, I chose the hot pink last year and I'm so glad I did. It's such a bright pop of color over there. And um, this turns out to be quite a shaded area. And uh, they seem 
really happy there. And I have uh, guacamole hosta that are coming in in between them. And I think that'll be a really nice pop of bright green this summer. And again, that'll do well because it's shaded. But I was really thrilled with the color of this azalea. And this beautiful white azalea my friend Lori gave me is thriving in this pot. Every now and then I throw some fertilizer on it. And I always top it off with mulch or compost as the soil level goes down. But it is doing really well at the corner of my polytunnel garden. And I've got various pots over here as well as tomatoes. And I've got pots of marigolds, which are very tiny right now, but hopefully they'll be a nice yellow. And my tomato plants are getting a lot bigger with a couple days of heat, as are my zucchini plants. And I just read somewhere that nasturtiums are a great companion plant. So I'm glad that my nasturtiums have come up here. They're supposed to discourage uh, zucchini squash bugs so hopefully that'll work we'll see I'm, I'm going going big on companion planting this year and I like to have a mix of flowers and vegetables anyway but nasturtiums are really pretty and they vine very nicely and I'm excited to see how they look all of my ferns in the shade garden are coming up they look so pretty with this fresh spring green. They're just such a pretty texture. And they're all throughout the back of this border. I've got some columbine about in this pot that's about to bloom. But they're such a beautiful texture and color. Working in this garden has been quite a challenge lately. I just discovered that my neighbors right on the other side of that fence have put in some beehives. And there's one angry scout bee that really doesn't like me to work in this area. So I'm hoping he gets used to me and realizes I'm the one that plants the flowers. But we'll see how that goes. But I'm only able to be back here because it's a cloudy day. And um, on a warm, sunny day, he's out scouting. And he does not like my presence. But there are a few things that are new in the garden. Um, I did want to, again, highlight the arugula blooms. They're so beautiful. I just love them. And they come up randomly. They come up from seed that, that fell from previous years. I had arugula in here two years ago. And uh, it always comes up somewhere. So I love, I love plants that self-sow. It's kind of nice to get those surprises in the spring. And if they pop up and you don't like where they are, you can always move them. And the Sweet William are getting ready to bloom. They're looking really pretty and developing their buds. And the tulips are on their way out, but I do have a couple really pretty varieties here. Again, with the uh, pink and white, that violet pink, which I love. So I'm doing pinks and purples and violets, tossing in some yellows. But I'm really, this year, really loving that kind of hot pink color. And here's some purple salvia, which are doing really well. I planted this one back here last year. And I like it so well that I added another two from elsewhere in my garden. I put one there and over here. So I think that'll look really pretty next year. Hopefully they'll bloom this year too. But my hollyhocks are getting enormous here. For some reason they got all eaten up at the front of the yard. But they're doing really well back here. So maybe it's my rabbit which spends a lot of time down at the lower level. But that just goes to show you, you should scatter things all throughout the garden because somewhere where they may be attacked by animals in another part of the garden, they may be left alone. 
And then I haven't been able to water too much over there. So my lettuce tower and my strawberry tower are just kind of eking by. But as you can see, I'm bee friendly too. I have uh, little houses there for the solitary bees and uh, the mason bees, but they're, they're pretty docile. And I think bees are generally docile, but there is one scout bee that's given me a problem from the neighbor's hive. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes this spring. Hopefully he's going to start leaving me alone. But everything's coming along, guys, and I'm getting my gardens worked on one by one, kind of work in one area each day. And um, I love to spend time out here. And I just planted some cosmos interspersed with some of these lettuce. So that's looking going to be really pretty, I hope. But cosmos are another thing which get eaten as soon as I plant the tender seedlings. Gotta leave. Gotta run, guys. You can run with me. He discovered me. He's still buzzing around. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Okay. All right, <laughs> he's chasing me. I'm gonna go inside. Oh, this is as far as he's chased me. He's chased me a good half an acre. <laughs> I think I'm safe now. But while I'm over here, I'll show you this pansy. <laughs> okay, I think we're safe now, but I'm gonna go in. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And wish me luck with my angry bee.